Call this meeting to order. So 2.1 changes to the agenda and approval of the agenda. And we do have two changes for this agenda. One is item 8.21, the tag on bid agreement for continuing contract for fire safety, casualty and sanitation inspections is changed to tag on bid RFP for permitting and inspection services at the request of Vince Wyndham, Program Director for Purchasing. And the other change is administrative personnel appointments, deleted item 5.2, appointment of assistant principal 10 month, Baker School at the request of Dr. Hale. And that moves us to section three, recognitions. And we do have several recognitions for Monday night. 3.1 will be the recognition of Ms. McKenzie Holliday and Mr. Eric Marshall, school crossing guards for their heroic actions. 3.2 will be recognitions of individual 2022 National Archery State Program Champions in the elementary school division. 3.3 will be recognition of Meg's Middle School Archery Team as the 2022 State Champions in the National Archery State Program. 3.4, recognition of combined Destin Elementary School and Destin Middle School 4th and 5th grade elementary archery team as the 2022 State Champions. At this time, for Section 4, we don't know if we have any visitors. And Section 5, Administrative Personnel Appointments. We have 5.1, Appointment of Assistant Principal 1, 12-month, Niceville High School. 5.2 was deleted, as we stated earlier. Section 6, 6.1, Members of the Public. At this time, we don't know that we would have any. Section 7 was Committee and Staff Reports for today only. Section 8, Consent Agenda, 8.1 will be approval of the Consent Agenda, which will consist of 8.2, approval of the minutes of the workshop on April the 7th and of the minutes for April the 11th. 8.3, appropriation of District 3 School Board Member Capital Outlay Funds to prior in the amount of $4,000 by Ms. Ivanchuk. And 8.4, appropriation of District 1 School Board Member Capital Outlay Funds to prior for painting in the amount of $4,245.75 by Dr. White. 8.5, appropriation of District 1 School Board Member Capital Outlay Funds to MEGS for Chromebook carts in the amount of $3,241.59 by Dr. White. 8.6, appropriation of District 1 School Board Member Capital Outlay Funds to Shalimar for picnic tables in the amount of $6,969.11 by Dr. White. 8.7, appropriation of District 2 School Board Member Capital Outlay Funds to Destin Middle School for classroom iPads in the amount of $8,272 by Mrs. Gardner. 8.8, .8, Appropriation of District 2 School Board Member Capital Outlay Funds to Northwest Florida Ballet Academy for 40 classroom desks in the amount of $4,236.40 by Mrs. Gardner. 8.9, Request to advertise a public hearing for adoption of a revised job description for the Program Director, Equity Investigations, presented by Dr. Hale. 8.10, request to advertise a public hearing for the adoption of a new description for Program Director for Safety, presented by Dr. Hale. 8.11, Budget Amendment Number 7, Fiscal Year 2021 and 2022, presented by Julie Perry, Interim Chief Financial Officer. 8.12, Monthly Financial Statement for March 2022, presented by Julie Perry. 8.13, invoices to be approved by payment, presented by Julie Perry. 8.14, school donations, presented by Julie Perry. 8.15, payroll warrant register and accounts payable register for March 2022, totaling $38,114,723.86, and bank transfers for March 2022, totaling $55,000, presented by Julie Perry. 8.16, Bank of America Banking Services Fee Agreement, presented by Julie Perry. 8.17, ITB 22-17, Electronic Message Center for Crestview High School, presented by Vince Wyndham. 8.18, Renewal of RFP 
20-01, Food Service Management Operations, presented by Vince Windham. 8.17, Renewal of Tag on Bid, ITB, BC-04-02-20-39, Ice Machines, Continuing Supply, presented by Vince Windham. 8.20, Renewal of Tag on Bid, ITQ, 2742-MST-BJH, Locker Purchase and Related Services. 8.21, Tag on Bid, RFP, for Permitting and Inspection Services, presented by Vince Windham. 8.22, Resolution 22-03, declaring a certain parcel of real property of the school district as surplus and authorizing and directing the superintendent to advertise the property for public sale by sealed proposals and return recommendation to the school board regarding, regarding such disposal by Dr. Bill Smith. 8.23, Resolution 22-04, declaring a certain parcel of real property of the school district as surplus and authorizing and directing the superintendent to advertise the property for public sale by sealed proposal and return a recommendation to the school board regarding such disposal by Dr. Bill Smith. 8.24, Surplus of School Buses, presented by Jay McGinnis. I just want to say, I know it's ridiculous, but it just makes me so happy to see that we are surplusing buses, and uh, meaning that we're getting those new ones out there on the road, and, and uh, it just, it's such a, it's, at least it's a tangible evidence that we are moving forward and exciting, and I look at these um, dates going back into uh, last century of buses and it's a uh, it's it's exciting and uh, I just hope the, the public can I doubt they're as excited as I am mr. Chambers but I, I'm glad that we can at least I mean there was a time we couldn't surplus anything because we needed everything that we could get rolling and and there was a time that we actually took the surplus yes from We're taking the handy hand me down so yeah. I, I I just wanted to point that out that yeah. I think it's great that we yeah. can have that when it you is. see one of our new buses sitting next to an old bus, uh -huh. then you're re you realize, wow, that is an old yep. bus. Yep. Yep. Nice job getting that rotation <laughs> so that we can purchase those buses Absolutely. every year because we've so. never had a plan that every year that we will purchase so many. We have some buses. new ones coming still, don't we? Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and I appreciate you making that point because uh, this board and your leadership, uh, we now have a bus replacement program, as we know. 40 uh, buses last year, 20 this year, and we'll look to uh, add within the capital budget again for the upcoming year approximately 20 buses. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting to truly have a program in place exactly. as we replenish the fleet. Yes, thank you. I know the drivers are excited too. Yes. Mm -hmm. 8.25, Inter-Institutional Early College Dual Enrollment Articulation Agreement between the Okaloosa County School District and Northwest Florida State College, presented by Jeff Palmer. 8.26, Non-Referral Source Certification Amended Document for Walton Beach Medical Center, presented by April Branscombe. And 8.27, Elementary and Secondary Education Act, ESEA Federal Programs Application for 2022-2023 School Year, presented by Amy Dale. And that brings us to Section 9. 9.1, Employees on Administrative Leave, presented by Dr. Hale. 9.2, Deferred Retirement Option Program, otherwise known as DROP, presented by Dr. Hale. 9.3, Out of Field Report for the 2021-2022 School Year, presented by Karen Peake. 9.4, Employment Separations, presented by Dr. Hale. 9.5, Personnel Recommendations, presented by Dr. Hale. 9.6, Employee Transferred, presented by Dr. Hale. 9.7, Employee Suspension, presented by Dr. Hale. 9.8, Reinstatement, Reimbursement of Sick Leave due to Line of Duty Illness, Injury, or Medical Exam, presented by Dr. Hale. And 9.9, .9, Leave Without Pay, presented by Dr. Hale. That brings us to Section 10, Discussion Agenda. 10.1 would be any items moved from Consent Agenda, which we don't now know. That brings us to Section 11, Construction Program, Owner's Rep, <coughs> Business. And we have already had April's meeting and April's Construction Business Report, mm -hmm. so our next one will be in May. I believe that's May the 9th. That brings us down to 11.2, Program Number 6, Task Order 16, GMP and ODP, 
for the roofing projects at Choctaw and Lewis, presented by Dr. Smith. 11.3 TPM program number six, task order number two, phase three, which is the final phase, owner directed scope modification to Blue Water Elementary and Walker Elementary, presented by Dr. Smith. That brings us to number 12, information technology and seat management. And we don't have anything listed there, which brings us to item 13, attorney's business. No report this morning, Madam Chairman. And now we are at the superintendent's business, and I see he has a stack over there. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, School Board. I do want to give a, a little bit of information about uh, a few topics. So first of all, yesterday we had our Career and Technical Education Signing Day, and this is the third year that we've had this. And it's nice when uh, you think about what we do for athletes. You know, athletes across the nation have a signing day. Mm -hmm. So we thought it'd be appropriate that we would have a CTE signing day for students who've taken part in programs such as automotive, culinary, welding, cybersecurity, and, and many others. And yesterday, um, under the leadership of Ms. Branscombe and her team, uh, we had a, in essence, a packed house. We had about almost 200 folks um, that were in attendance. We had students and parents. About 120 students were there. We had about 250 students who were eligible, but about 120 uh, or so showed up, and it was a, a great event. And I do want to say that these are students that are signing a letter of intent to either go into college, into the military, or into the workforce, and going and taking the skills that they learned in CTE courses here at Okaloosa, and then applying them to those areas. So they literally sat down about eight at a time, and they signed their letter of intent, the parents behind them. It was a, a great event. We had uh, Nathan Sparks from One Okaloosa EDC. He was there and, and gave some encouraging words as well. <coughs> and part of this is Ms. Branscombe did a great job of this and Mr. Sparks did a great job in saying, you know, we want you to go to college. We want you to uh, go to the military. But one day, you know, we'd love for you to come back and utilize the skills that you learned here in Okaloosa and apply them locally to the industry. And that's what we're trying to do as well. So it was a, a great day. And a, and a lot of letters signed. Mm -hmm. I just want to add that the just to see the excitement of the students. I mean, that was just very rewarding. But the parents, <laughs> they were so appreciative. Ms. Branson and we were just talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. um, just standing behind their child and signing that letter of intent. I just I loved watching the letter. I mean, the faces of the parents. And so many came up afterwards and thanked us and um, for doing that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad our parents were involved and could stand right behind. Absolutely. Very good. Those students. And I do appreciate uh, Mr. Ken Nielsen with the Crestview TV who, uh, who was there mm -hmm. live streaming as well and, and, and getting this out uh, to the community, which was, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Shifting to, to the budget. As you know, we're last uh, board meeting, uh, the board approved our staffing pattern and we're going through the, the budgeting process right now. And a big piece of that budget, budgeting process, as you know, is the work that uh, Mr. Horton does with each of our principals in terms of those allocations. And we've shared each year that, you know, there's a finite amount of money that, that comes in for school districts. And it's uh, prudent upon us to be as conservative as, as we can um, with allocations that go out to the schools. We know that uh, in the state of Florida, you know, we're required to, to meet class size. And that's something uh, that we do. Mr. Horton works with each of those principals um, each uh, summer but also it starts right now as they go through the process. So he's doing that individually with each school. These are the amount of allocations that, that we're gonna go out with. And remember, every allocation is a certain amount of dollars that goes with that. So again, a conservative approach, but making sure that we obviously meet class size. With the staffing pattern that was approved last board meeting, there were some um, things that we did as well. You know, we looked at higher enrollment schools where they did receive um, some allocations. And then through our ESSER dollars, we're also gonna look at maybe some schools in need that's also gonna need some, some support. And we're going through that process of looking at bits of data. We'll look at uh, FSA data when that comes out as well to be able to provide support for our schools. And I think that that'll be extremely important as we go into this upcoming school year. And then, actual school budgets. Those will go out uh, tomorrow. 
So Ms. Perry, Ms. Perry and her staff um, have done a great job preparing each school's budget packet, which will go out. So they'll start working through that process in terms of teacher allocations, front office staff, um, ed support positions. So principals will work through that process. And Dr. Hale and his group are now going through the process of do finalizing recommendations for the upcoming school year uh, with each of the principals. So in HR, it's a, um, it's a busy time of the year right now as well, and will continue well into the summer. But uh, Dr. Hale and his staff, Ms. Perry and her staff are critical right now where we are moving into the upcoming school year. Shifting to mental health, I wanna give a, a mental health update for the board. We've talked about this being a, a priority as we go into the upcoming school year. And I think mental health is a prior priority across the state of Florida. But I wanted to share, coming into this school year, we had 18 mental health counselors. Next year, we'll go into the school year with 20 mental health counselors. So we'll utilize the allocation from the state to increase those numbers. We have also now partnered with a group called CDAC. And apparently, CDAC does not stand for anything. But CDAC. And CDAC is a group that also has state funding that this group is able to get for mental health services. So we currently have three mental health counselors this year through that program. So that's an additional three mental health counselors. They're being um, located at three elementary schools, which, which helps us. And we're hopeful that uh, we'll be able to get another mental health counselor or two through CDAC for next year. So the more uh, mental health counselors that we can have in our school district, I think that that is extremely important. Uh, Mr. Chambers, excuse me, I'd like to say, um, we're going to have uh, 20, but we actually could use more, correct? I mean, if we had availability of more, that would be good, or where would you say that feel like it's adequate, but it'd be great to have them, be nice, or where do we kind of stand on that? I mean, ideally, you'd love to have a mental health counselor at every school. School, okay. And with that in mind, uh, next year, we will have a mental health counselor full-time at each of the high schools. Okay. So that's one of the adjustments that we are making for the upcoming uh, school year with the addition of two more, plus the help of CDAC with the three mental health counselors. Right. So each high school, that'll be a change. Each high school will have their own. And I think um, at the high school level, I think we would all agree that, that that's an area where mm -hmm. having a full-time mental health counselor mm -hmm. is, okay. is a priority. Thank you. And, and could I just interject um, and, and, and say that um, the state of Florida has certainly recognized this as a as a as a real need and the public schools of Florida and and they've appropriated funding for that and uh, it, it, it's made a difference and uh, I think it's important for the public to know that, uh, that, that this is a statewide initiative mm -hmm. May is uh, is mental health awareness month mm -hmm. and we are going to be doing um, some highlights throughout the month of May and there's a theme this year that is humankind, be both. And at the elementary level, that deals with promoting kindness. And at the secondary level, it deals with not only promoting kindness, but also taking away the stigma that sometimes is attached to mental health. So that'll be some things you'll see. But also during the, uh, the month of May student services, they'll be providing brochures um, to our guidance counselors regarding mental health. There'll also be suicide prevention wallet cards that will go to guidance departments. Uh, I think that's important to make sure that we have information out there for students who might be struggling and so they know where to go, who to call. And then also individual mental health counselors are working with school staffs about the awareness of mental health. So it'll be a busy month of May with testing, uh, but also making sure that we do a good job with Mental Health Awareness Month of getting out that, that information. Next school year with mental health, we will have a mental health campaign, so to speak. And there's gonna be videos, brochures. We'll be sending information to schools during five minute, seg five minute segments where they can get out information um, to students as well. And all of us know that um, we are a Hope Squad district. And I think uh, Dr. Kelly is gonna probably share some information during her time about something exciting that uh, we have the ability to do next week. But I'll let Dr. Kelly share that information. Testing is underway, as you know, uh, but grade three ELA and, and grades four through 10 in writing is done, and that's one part of FSA that uh, is already behind us. 
but beginning May 2nd, grades eight, four through 10 in ELA, grades four through eight in math, will start their testing, as well as algebra, uh, geometry, biology, civics, and US history. So May, as you know, is a busy month of, uh, of testing. And this will be the last year, as we know, of F FSA testing, and then the progress monitoring assessment will take its place as we go forward. And the last thing I would say is the central um, complex. Um, we're starting to get some actual numbers that are in about this, com about this complex. Mr. Horton um, and his group will be getting with each of you uh, more specifically uh, about those numbers, but uh, we're, we're excited that uh, I think it's finally here and we can make some decisions. So of course, you. you know that's one of my pet projects. I Absolutely. couldn't be more excited to hear what Mr. Horton has to present to us because for me, it's very important that we consolidate our services in one area and that we update this facility that has been a need here for so, so long. So long. Yes, Very excited. Anything that, else? that is all. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, that brings us down to Section 15, Board Members Announcements and Requests for Information. And I think we'll start with Ms. Gardner. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. Um, we mentioned CTE, and again, just a shout out to April. I think she <coughs> slipped out right there, but that was a wonderful program, and it just makes you so proud. Standing up there and seeing all the great things that our teachers, our principals, and what's going on within our schools. Um, to, just a shout out to, you know, I should not be surprised because our business, our community people are just so outstanding and providing time. And tomorrow is Silver Sands Prom. And tomorrow morning, we're going to do a spa day. And we have businesses throughout Fort Walton that are going to come in and they're going to uh, provide. Uh, their, their nails being painted and they're going to do makeup and they're going to do hair and all of this is being donated by our business our professional people that are coming in and taking awesome. these two hours that are going to do prepare the young mm -hmm. ladies for prom tomorrow night and I know um, Ms. Vanjek you enjoy Baker and you and your husband had your dancing shoes on we so did. <laughs> tomorrow night is um, Silver Sands prom and everyone is welcome to come out that is just again a very rewarding um, program and to watch those young adults in there is um, and we do and I we all we so appreciate our community stepping up and supporting all of our students in our schools and um, all we have to do sometimes we don't even have to go out and ask um, these individuals just pop in and say hey how can I help you and we it, it truly is a team a village a team so that's exciting that's just, there's a lot going on but that's all I'm going to share right now right. thank you that's advantage okay uh, Yes, I got a couple things. First of all, I want to ask you, Mr. Chambers, you were talking about testing. Um, do we know what, since we're changing to progress monitoring, what what the impact of those scores will have? Do we know that yet on, is it going to be like status quo because our school grades will come back and all that, do you know? So I think there will be more information that will come. However, we do know that uh, there will be school grades. There still will be accountability. Mm -hmm. There will still be graduation requirements um, tied to it. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we know at this time. Yeah, okay, all right, thank you. All right, so I want to um, talk about Take Stock in Children. I haven't talked about the Public Schools Foundation in a while, and of course I very much enjoy uh, being a part of that board over there. Um, anyway, so uh, coming up, you've got an invitation, board members, and everyone on May 5th, we're gonna be recognizing the seniors that we've been mentoring in that program. We have about 14 graduates that we're gonna be recognizing, so I hope you'll come out for that because that shows a long progression of success for take um, stock um, but we've we've been a really uh, doing well in the take stock program and we're we've set a goal we have right now about 57 students who are being mentored but we've now set a goal as a, a board of 100 students so it's an ambitious goal but we're looking towards that and for that to happen two things have to happen we have to have mentors for each of these students that's part of the program so anybody listening to this or watching this it would like to be a mentor it's very rewarding and it's a very small amount of time that you're actually giving to these students so please contact the district and the foundation if you'd like to mentor next school year and then on, and then of course we have to have donations because we have to um, pay for those scholarships the state matches part of it but there are um, parts that we have to pay so if anybody is out there particularly businesses that would like to be corporate sponsors we certainly would love to have you be a part of our um, our plan here so um, also this week uh, we went to the county commission meeting 
and presented a proclamation for Take Stock in Children Month for May. And I want you to know, board members, I will be submitting on behalf of the foundation um, a proclamation similar for us to do the same recognition for uh, the month of May for uh, Take Stock in Children. So I think it's so important that our community knows about the program, and Okaloosa County has been very successful with our Take Stock program, and it's, it's very rewarding. Okay, um, you know, I'm usually a pretty upbeat person, but there's a topic that I'm pretty um, upset about. And uh, this has to do, and I hope parents are out there listening, to these TikTok challenges that are having our students uh, commit acts of vandalism to our schools. Uh, and this actually has hit home in uh, the, uh, the school that's in my area just recently last week. And it's heartbreaking to know that uh, we have students who will absolutely go into particularly restrooms and destroy property. So Mr. Chambers, I'm bringing this up um, because I think we need to make sure our board and, and you as superintendent in our district send a clear message that we are not going to tolerate students destroying the property in our schools. Um, and I hope that they understand along with their parents that not only do we have district policy, student conduct against this, but this could lead to legal ramifications for these students. Um, it is, I mean, uh, sinks were torn out of the walls, things like that. And not only are you destroying that, but you don't have the right to destroy property that allows, now they have to lock those restrooms for a time so that um, they can get it repaired, so our employees can go repair it. But that makes it inconvenient for other students. The restrooms are locked down, and, and many of our schools, particularly our bigger schools, they don't really have enough restrooms anyway. But I am very upset about this, and I, I, I'm, I know, Mr. Chambers, you're speaking to the administration at these schools and making sure that we are sending a clear signal that we will take action against these students, uh, what they're doing, and that um, and parents should know that too. So sorry to be so heavy today, but that really bothers me. And uh, I think that we just need to speak out because I wish TikTok could go away, but I don't have that control, but I do have the control of saying, uh, students, you will be so prosecuted or punished for those actions. So thank you, sir. No, and absolutely. And, and we have spoken with administrators regarding uh, TikTok. And what I will say is um, students who, who vandalize property or, or do things within some of these TikTok challenges that goes against uh, what should be occurring in schools will be held accountable. Well, we're working so hard to update our schools yeah. and to make our schools look nice for yes. all of the students and um, they're just wasting taxpayer money at this point and it's just it's not like you said it's not fair for all the other students employees that are in this school when yeah. one or two vandalize and it just takes more money that we're trying to use to update and, and our employees modernize. have to go fix all this and instead of doing what they need they have to go and and replace mm -hmm. sinks and it's just ridiculous so i'm Anything done else? thank you thank <laughs> you mr vancheck all right, Dr. White. I do. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, uh, just a, a couple of quick announcements. Uh, first, to uh, again express appreciation to the superintendent and to Jan and Mary and all the principals and guidance counselors and teachers that uh, helped us recognize 583 students at the Ann Mitchell Academic yes. Senior Honors Assembly on April the 12th. And, uh, Superintendent, it was a great event. Uh, we certainly appreciate Northwest uh, Florida State College for allowing us to use their beautiful facility. And it was just, uh, in my mind, very, very impressive. And, and thank you for all the good work, hard work, and a lot of work that went into that uh, by you, your staff, and by those students, of course, and their teachers and, and their parents. And Dr. Um, White, if yes, I might. Sure. Uh, it was performed so effectively and efficiently that I believe we recognized those more than 500 students in less than two hours. Yes, we did. And I think that's a record as well. It just went so smoothly, hardly a bobble at all. Yeah, and you know, you. that's a big number that's coming huge. out of two that's years. Those saying. students yeah. that we recognized, their last normal year before was ninth grade. That's right. And still they've risen above, and that's certainly First. to their credit their parents and the teachers that we had that many honor students. 
was a great exactly. event. So thank you for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mary and Jan and Paul for doing the videography. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just a couple of quick things. Uh, you know, I mentioned to you that I would have some great news uh, that would be coming forward, and this pertains to a Choctahatchee High School student, Amaya Ricks, who is a senior at Choctaw and is among 250 new Amazon future engineer scholarship recipients. Wow, super. And so she received a $40,000 scholarship to study computer science starting this fall and also a paid internship wow. opportunity at Amazon after her Ooh, freshman year, cool. year of college. And just so you know, uh, she has a 4.8392 GPA <laughs> and also was a finalist for the Peggy Gorday Bruner uh, Academic Award. Uh, then, uh, and just a quick note about Choctaw Seniors, uh, class of 2022 yard signs have arrived <laughs> and are on sale in the front office for $15. And I'll tell you, I know for a fact that's a good deal while, while supplies last. And uh, just a couple of quick things regarding prior. Uh, eighth grade science and geometry algebra one STEM boot camp exam review will be held Monday from 2.30 to 4 o'clock and students can register online or see their science and math teacher for some more information about this. And then at Meg's Middle School this entire week, Meg's students are dressing up for all of their military students. And Teacher Appreciation Week is May the 2nd through the 6th. And Parents Advancing Wildcat Spirit, pause, will be honoring teachers May the 3rd through the 5th with a salad bar, Meg's Wildcat wagon trip through the halls mm -hmm. and, uh, and also uh, a special lunch so Great. just wanted to make those quick announcements madam chair and thank very you very good thank you and so i just have a few first of all we do miss chairman bryant today and he is traveling to or is actually uh, in session today with a fisbit meeting and was yesterday uh, at a conference <coughs> but uh, in light of that, he will be bringing to us Monday night a request for reimbursement for those travels and for attending that. So expect that. But then congratulations to former Niceville High School student Katie Lightfoot for being inducted into the University of Alabama's <coughs> Mortar Board Honor Society. And I understand that's a, a very high kudo and, and difficult to get into. So congratulations to Katie. And then a reminder that the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Youth Week is May the 31st through June the 3rd, and that is being held at Shoal River Middle this time. It's for ages 10 through 15, and it occurs at 8 a.m. through noon every day that week. On April the 25th, there's an exciting free concert to be held by the Symphonia Youth Orchestra at 7 p.m. at the new Destin High School. And tomorrow from 9 until 10 is Spa Day, as Ms. Gardner said, at Silver Sands. And it is also Earth Day. And I'll just announce that yesterday, uh, Mr. Chambers alluded to the Hope Squad, but we have a couple of very exciting things happen. Yesterday, we had an all-day training, the very first of its kind for Hope Squad, the first Hope Squad training at a military installation for the 33rd and it was their advisor training. They uh, trained, we trained 12 advisors who will lead the first Hope Squad for young service airmen and women. And so we think that that is a program that will be replicated across the United States and maybe even across the world because we know those young service people are not stationary, they are transient. So we're, whatever base they land at next, those people are committed to bringing the Hope Squad to wherever they go. So that was very exciting. And of course, a privilege for me to be a volunteer trainer. And at the end of that, one of the young servicemen ripped off his patch and gave it to me. So I was just so excited oh, to, to have that honor and, and a privilege to serve alongside Ms. Brockman to conduct that training. But I will announce, sort of on the QT, that Mr. Chambers and I and Ms. Brockman will have opportunity to speak to the First Ladies executive committee uh, about the Hope Squad next week. So we're excited to bring that Fun. potential to the schools in the state of Florida. Uh, and that's all I have. I think that's enough. <laughs> Anybody else have anything? All right. Any questions? Other comments? Anybody else in the room? The executive team? Anybody have any other announcements? Okay. Well, at this time, I will adjourn the meeting.
Madam Chair, yes. do we have another item on the agenda yeah. regarding now? Okay. Uh, Public hearing. Thank you so much. Item 16.1, members of the public uh, will be able to address the board uh, concerning a public hearing for instructional materials, textbook adoptions for, for math, excuse, excuse me, grades K through 12, presented by Ryan Gore. You know, I would like to address uh, th this item. Okay. Um, Thank you. As you know, uh, we were in the process of bringing our math textbook adoption uh, forward. And recently, there was a um, there was word sent from the state that uh, items on the pre-approved list, in terms of textbook companies, were going to be removed right now. And so, I would like for Ms. Lightborn to come up and give you a briefing, kind of, of where we are and what we're actually going forward with. And I will say, <clears throat> a concern that I do have with this change right now will be receiving textbooks in August mm -hmm. on time. Yes. Yeah. And have any of those publishing companies responded to that? Are they able to I think Ms. Ms. Lightborn that? will kind of share some light on that. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, so just so everybody understands the process, um, months ago we received what they call a short list from DOE. And that list included many, many books that then we begin our process. All districts begin their process at that point. Um, just last Friday at 3 o'clock, we received the short list, which was much shorter than anybody anticipated. Um, the short list for elementary had one book <coughs> oh. available, one, one um, company. Um, middle school, luckily what we have, um, what our committees chose were also chosen and state adopted. So in front of you today, what we've put is all of the textbooks that are currently state adopted on the short list that our adoption process also selected. So those can go forward in the process for advertisement, okay? What you don't have are the books that we, as a committee, selected that were not selected for by the state. However, those books, if you go on the state website, at first were denied but now say pending because all of those companies have the option to appeal mm -hmm. um, the textbook we um, selected for elementary was Savis, which is the old pearson mm -hmm. okay and um, there the state did send us the rubric there was one grade level grade level one with one concern in it so Savis feels confident that they'll be able to correct whatever the concern that DOE has, resubmit, and hopefully be selected. So we are waiting through the, the appeals process. Ryan Gore, Stephanie Thetford, and Amy Dale have been phenomenal. They've been on Zooms with DOE. They've been on Zooms with um, all the other districts in the state some districts had already started their ordering process so that really kind of blindsided some folks mm -hmm. so we are on top of it ryan is uh, is consistently talking to people to make sure that we're doing what we need to do our greatest concern is as you know what we put today has to advertise for 20 days so we will not be able to do that for the next adoption, the K-5 adoption, until the next board meeting. Hopefully, the appeal process will go through. And at that point, we will get, bring it to you for that 20-day review as well. So that kind of puts us, those that you're getting today, puts us in a great place for ordering. Those that we have to bring to you then after the appeals process will put us in a place where um, we may be a little bit late getting those books in. Um, but our mantra is right now, we made it through COVID. <laughs> we put yeah, curriculum together and we got it out. Yeah. Um, we have had our SPP meetings, so I've been talking about this with teachers and administrators. And I said, it's going to be okay. We're going to put pacing guides with um, instructional um, components in it. So we'll be able to make it until we get those books. So, you know, if we made it through COVID, we can make it through mm -hmm. anything. Yeah, so absolutely. we're going to be okay. It's just not going to be ideal. But So, Ms. Lightborn, um, these are secondary. So um, one, at one meeting, I questioned about textbooks 
these are, are my hardback books these are because I know uh, we've gone to consumables but that's mainly elementary no no no, no. no. okay um, some are consumable some okay. are hardback it depends on the company and what was chosen okay. I believe math nation is consumable most books concern um, currently are consumable especially okay. at the elementary and middle school level some of the upper upper level uh, math textbooks are still hard copy but most most of the textbook companies have gotten wise and gone to the consumable which means that what we have this year will not be of course usable that we already have you know in the past you go well, well we have, have two problems with what we currently have okay one if they're consumable this is an and really elementary is where the greatest concern is one if they're consumable of course we don't have them unless we have some extras right um and then two you lose all the electronic pieces of it mm -hmm. um so you really don't have that as well and then three the standards are changing right so the those books standards. were written on the laugh standards yeah. and now the standards are best standards so we feel it would be better if we pull curriculum together mm -hmm. um, through the pacing guide for teachers to use until we can get those textbooks in middle the middle school yet yeah, and you're correct everything that's going through is secondary mm -hmm. um, middle schools in, in a pretty good place as far as what was state adopted that's what's moving forward and and we should have those books on time um, seventh grade advanced was not approved so that's one that we'll have to be waiting on to see mm -hmm. any book that we had as our second or third choice if that was a state adopted um, book now we are reconvening those committees so we're prepared if the um, the appeal doesn't go through we will be prepared to select the next book that state adopted that our committees have also adopted so we're also in the process of now beginning to review those other books as well right. okay. okay thank All you right. for having a plan B yes, yes. that's good that's if great I could, if I could just clarify just for a moment sure then, what 17.1 is mm -hmm. and that's a public hearing for the textbooks that that we are recommending that are from the current sans the books that were removed from the current list of textbooks approved by the state of Florida at yes. this time yes okay and that's all and that's all we we're put not, forward right now everything else is hold mm -hmm. yep just the ones that are that are approved absolutely right. yes very good well and you mentioned earlier um, or mr. Chambers did actually I would be very concerned especially for our elementary um, not having a textbook or the how long this process takes but knowing and working with Ms. Dell and Ms. Thetford I have as you said I have every bit of and, and you um, bit of confidence from our curriculum department that our teachers are going to be able to start off they're going to have materials they're going to be ready to go on day one um, without a hiccup yes. so again just knowing what these ladies right there and your expectations and mr chambers i think our elementary is going to be they'll be just they're fine, be just fine. Mm -hmm. yep. they're going to be fine these are professional teachers they know exactly they can um pick it up and go with us yes nice um, job yeah. and we're only adopting math this year right mm -hmm. math this year's math oh, adoption yep. the following year will be social studies the year after that is science yeah okay so that's mm -hmm. so we just have to all right thank you you're welcome anybody else that's it. All right. I think at this time we can adjourn. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good job. Thank you, Superintendent. Yeah, that's good.